Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say from a grateful heart, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 12th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of the book of Luke. But I was wondering if you might be able to tell me who said these words. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, Well, what shall we do then? And he answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Now, if you're like most people, you would probably say that that was Jesus that spoke those words. But it wasn't Jesus. It was John the Baptist. And the reason that I want to point that out this morning is because if you talk to most people, they think the message of Jesus was something new and fresh that he brought when he came as Messiah. But the only reason that they would say that is because they have not studied the Old Testament carefully. Because 75% of everything that Jesus taught came directly from the Old Testament. And so even though Jesus himself did teach this message, John the Baptist taught it before Jesus. And there were other prophets and great men of God in the Old Testament that taught it before John the Baptist. And here we are 2,000 years later, and we are still teaching the same message. Why? Because God doesn't change. If God doesn't change, his message to his people doesn't change. That's why we're told in Hebrews, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thy word is eternal. It is timeless. The word of God is alpha and omega, beginning and end, and everything in between. You see, there are those among us today who are seeking some new revelation, some new fresh word from God. But we're going to hear nothing new. Everything that we are to be told is right here within these pages. But let's just look at the message for a moment a little bit more deeply in what John the Baptist is saying. The first thing he says is bring forth fruits or works that are worthy of repentance. Well, what would those works be? Well, the first one would be in Luke chapter 3, verse 11. He says unto them, he that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none. How many coats do you and I have hanging in our closets? How many are there that we can help with those coats? He says, he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Is our refrigerator full? Do we have a second freezer stuffed to the brim? We're not to live life like that, friends. We're supposed to look, seek for others who are in great need and impart what God has blessed us with to them as well so that they might be blessed. Who have we reached out and helped today? Well, these were the common people that asked John what he meant when he said, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. But then the publicans came unto John and they said unto him, master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, exact no more than that which is appointed you. Now the publicans were like the tax collectors. And so John is saying, be very fair with everyone. Do not take any more than what has been appointed. Anything outside of that would be theft. It would be dishonest. That's why Zacchaeus, a publican, when he meets the Lord Jesus, he says, I'm going to give back all this money that I have taken unfairly from others. I wonder if Zacchaeus had heard that message from John the Baptist. Just a thought. 
In verse 14, he says, then the soldiers, so we have the people who have come to John the Baptist and asked him this question. We have the publicans, the tax collectors, who've asked John this question. Now we see the soldiers, Roman soldiers. These aren't the Jewish people. These are Roman pagan soldiers. And they look to John and ask him the same question. And he says unto them, do violence to no man. Now, these are soldiers that have been trained and prepared for war. And he's telling them to do violence to no man. If soldiers are to do no violence to no man, what about you and I as the people of God? We're to be gentle. We're to be meek. We're to be kind. We're not to exert our authority. We're certainly not to defend ourselves. We're certainly not to take up arms and strike out at others. He says do violence to no man even those who, in our opinion, deserve it. He says, nor shall you accuse any falsely, because you are men in power, and you hold the destiny of certain men in the palm of your hands. But don't accuse them falsely. If there's nothing negative to say about them, then remain quiet. And then notice what he says, because this is a lesson that everyone in America and maybe other parts of the world, but specifically in America, need to learn. Be content with your wages. Now, I'm going to add to this just a little bit, because not only are we to be content with our wages and live with what we have been given, but when we do receive a raise because someone higher than us finds favor in what we're doing and wants to pass on a blessing, to God be the glory. But we should be very careful about going and spending that raise by financing something, and then we're left with nothing at the end of the day. According to what we've just read here, anything we receive above our means of living, which should be very simple, should be passed on to others to bless them, not to spend upon ourselves. And that's really what it all boils down to, living within a simple means of life. Yet we live in an age where we are so fast-paced and we desire every new piece of technology that comes out. Why cannot we as the people of God be content with what we have been given, with the simplest things in life? Well, friends, I can't answer that question for you. I can only examine my own heart and take what I find before the Lord and ask for his grace and help in such a time of need. And I would encourage you to do the same. And here's what you'll discover. The simple things in life are the purest things in life. The simplest way of living is the purest way of living. And so, friends, I pray today that you will seek that within your own heart, and whatever you find, you will take before the Lord in your time of great need. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that your journey with Jesus will be blessed today, that you will walk in the fullness and wholeness of the Spirit of God, and that everything comes out of your mouth will bring him praise and glory, for he truly is the only one deserving of such honor. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.